Hi, we've been invited back to this home site to improve the look of the front of this house. Now, what can we do to make this home feel warmer or cozier? We have some landscape ideas in mind, but also some constructional features that are gonna help the look. We're gonna remodel or give this home a facelift from the front porch all the way to the driveway on the designer's landscape today. Okay, I want to let you know that I've, several weeks ago, I removed the African iris that was here in front of the porch in order to make way for our construction and the construction process. What we want to do really is, is add to this roof. Uh, this whole porch gets wet in the rain, and by extending this roof, Rodney has talked about making it a ranch style or a shed style roof, so it won't carry the same angle because it would end up too low, so it'll flatten out and come straight out at you. Then. The width of these two columns, we want to go ahead and, and build a gable or an archway that really accents the front door. So from this angle, we'll see this new porch extend over here. And for some feature around the base, we're going to come in with a little handrail that's made out of some weatherproofing material. It'll come out and go along the porch. And again, this should help dial things up a little bit. Landscape wise, with all this removed, we don't have to worry about it being damaged during construction. And I don't know about the Parsons Juniper. We will probably remove it and redecorate, like we said, all the way to the driveway here. That's probably the best way to give it a whole new fresh look. Again, from this angle, uh, we're gonna enjoy seeing this roof line extend. And I don't know how Rodney's gonna put all that together, but that's his department. So we'll talk to him about that and share that with you. Right now, I'm, I'm looking forward to the neat impression that we'll get leaving here, too. So, we'll let the guys come in and begin their rip out, and we'll go out into the yard and talk about plants and trees. Let's talk about crepe myrtle trees, a tree that is grown in the middle and southern United States, very beautiful when they bloom. In the wintertime, they drop their leaves. This is a great time to prune them not to hack them back to the main trunks like we see so many people do, but to shape them and tip them back like we want to show you. We want this tree to continue to look like a tree when it has no leaves on it. So I've got some sharp pruners here. Again, I'm trying to build a canopy basically. And I want that canopy look. And you see, as I'm beginning to prune here, I'm shaping or taking about 25% of the top off of here. Then I'll get branching that'll make it look fuller. Well, at this time when it has no leaves on it, it's a great time to consider lower branches or crossover branches that could be a problem. Along the walkway here, this branch could very well be in the way in the future. And then look at this one coming out about head level. So let's go ahead Take these guys off. Now also, there's a crossover branch that's rubbing on a main trunk, really causing some long-term damage. I want to take that off too. Well, in a short period of time, I'll have this tree shaped for his winter view, and then we look forward to branching and more fullness as spring develops. We've had a frost or a freeze about a month ago, and so we've done some things as a result of that, and that is pruning back the Aztec grass. Since then, you see it's starting to push back toward our spring growth. And this is a great time to go ahead and clean out any unwanted debris from around the plants and discard it. And also take advantage of fertilizing so that it gets right around the base of the root ball. Um, also, we've got a seasonal weed in here. 
that we can kind of pull out, eradicate, pull by hand. It's pretty easy to take care of and clean it out with the weeds and leaves that are also coming up. Um, there's a dollar weed in here too, and that requires a little bit of a different animal. So we've, this is a great time to use a post-emergent or a pre-emergent herbicide to help things out. The lantana here, we've cut these back also. And so they're starting to branch and get that spring fullness. They'll have color in no time. Well, back to the Parsons juniper up front. You know, this plant is really durable. It takes the heat, the cold. You can tell we've been through a frost and a freeze, as I mentioned, and this stuff is nice and green, or the bluish green cast it has. I'm gonna work on the, the clean out here, getting these ripped out, and then we'll catch up with the construction guys. Rodney and Mark begin our rip out. By pulling back several courses of the existing shingles, they remove the old eave drip and fascia board. Rodney strikes a line on the exposed roof in order to cut off a foot or so of the existing plywood that's on the roof. This will expose our old rafters and enable us to tie into these and extend our porch or our roof. Now, when we mark where these post plates are to be installed, a hole needs to be drilled in order to place them into the concrete. And I like the way Mark put a pinhole in a can of water in order to let the water flush into the concrete and keep the heat process down. This keeps the drill bit from heating up and also keeps the drill moving into the pervious concrete. Then he flushes out the hole and installs our plate. This is where our 4x4 posts will come down to be firmly attached to the concrete porch. These are load-bearing for our new roof extension, so they are bolted in, secured, and tightened down. Now at the valley area, where the existing porch meets the corner of the house, we had one board that was a little stubborn due to a nail that was driven in. Rodney gets the Sawzall, removes the nail, and the board slides right out. What a great tool to have around. Next, Rodney makes a clean cut on this corner in order to make a smooth patch and repair. It will also enable us to examine the wood underneath and see just what condition it's in. The fascia board comes off and fully exposes our existing beam. Our last post plate is securely tightened and we're ready to install our 4x4 columns. Next, we install one 4x4 post support and decide the angle of this new roof. We want our roof line to be strong enough for runoff of water, but not to appear too steep. The 4x4 posts are tacked into the plates and then braced to the wall so that they will stand up firm and upright. With the two end posts in place, a string line is pulled in order to line up the others in the center and at the same height. A final measurement is made with the last two and they're cut and put into place. Again, cross bracing or X bracing is used so that our four by fours will stand up straight and level. So now we're ready to work on our header, which will be the outside perimeter of our new roof line and porch. Okay, we're working on the header. And this is the part that goes right over the center. Hope that measures out there, Rodney. By the way, this header will be doubled. So this is our, our first one across here. They'll temporarily tack that in. And then we'll go ahead and put a, a full piece in here so we alternate the spacing on it. And the big thing is building this frame for the header before we come in and tie into these rafters, stick them out, and then put our plywood over there. We still have this rot to deal with in the corner, and Rodney's gonna get to that and help us out there. Um, no real damage except with the valley, we've had some water leak in there and leak back and cause a little bit of wood rot, 
And I think the outside of this beam might be a little weak. We'll, we'll check it with a screwdriver or something, see how bad it is. Now, also these post, these plates here for the, uh, the four bys that are set up, we've got three on each side, but you notice we don't have a four by that goes all the way up to the header. And that's why we're gonna come in with our four by post here, a low one that'll really support the handrail, about a 32 inch height here. So we'll see how that looks. We kind of eyeballed it between 30 and 36. We don't want the porch or the railing too high here because it, it might look a little, little odd. So it's a kind of a feel it thing. That's the height of our, of our railing. We look forward to getting to that point. Come on in, Ron. I think I got that in place for you. At least it's secure. How's it feel? All right, you ready for this next piece? All right, up we go. Going to center him up, huh? Okay, let Rodney do his nail gun thing there. The man's got a gun. Popsy Daisy. All right, we'll nail him off. Then we make two cuts, see? Fill all the way to the end. Before you know it, we'll start plywooding in that and then ready for our gable, huh? Can't wait. Okay, Rod, I'm tied off there, buddy. A new string line. And you're probably wondering what this is for. Well, this is really gonna be our new rail height. So, but before we do that, we wanna kinda of bring you up to speed on what we've been up to lately. Remember, we were putting in the header last. Well, we went ahead and built this gable. What do you think? It's kinda of bringing things together. Now, originally we had decided on coming with the width that would be for this inside pillar. But it was too short. We've got a four and a half on 12 pitch. So by bringing it out to this outside column, we've, it really gave us a little more height or headroom. And I think size wise, it's matched up well and it looks pretty good. Up top, what you can't see is where we ripped off again, put new plywood down and we saved some of the shingles. So we want to try to reuse some of these. There's no reason why we can't. They're in pretty good shape. We're gonna to try to match up the best we can with these uh, old shingles. But they both kind of fade together, so it's not really a major if we don't match up perfectly. But things are looking good in here. What we've done also is our patch and repair with the rotted wood, you remember that? Now we've got some new wood in there. We'll come in caulk and secure some of these lines and paint over that 
that'll look fine. In our rafter, our tie-in, we had these old three by four inch rafters, which is really kind of an odd size. We had talked about, do they go all the way through the house or is it just on the porch? I'm not really sure, but our two by fours tie into them and extend a couple feet or so with the support under the header. Now, before we actually put a soffit under here, we need to really consider, this is Florida, so we'll put a hurricane clip on these. I'll kind of show you where they go, just for security, it's code that we basically clip these on, okay? They get put right up here on the side and down on this header to keep some of the upwind draft from ripping off this roof under a heavy storm. Oh, there's one thing I've noticed in these windows here is that uh, the extra roof extension is added more shade to the porch or lack of sunlight. We've got a west exposure over here, so that might help reduce even the heat load as the summers approach. Mark and Rodney are putting in this four by that'll help support our railing. This is our height, like we said we've got. And before we get to our railing, I wanna show you a special material. This is made out of a weatherproof surfacing material that's really neat. We wanna talk about it. Okay, it cuts just like wood. It even sounds a little bit like wood, but it's not. It's a polyethylene product, basically recycled milk jugs. You've seen us do some deck surfacing on this, and I did mention that this was a, a surfacing product, but it's not. It's solid plastic all the way through. So this is what's gonna imitate a spindle, okay, a wood spindle. And then the two by fours here, we use not for support or structure as much as decoration. Basically, this product won't crack or peel or fade or mildew or splinter. So we know that whatever weather it's gonna get out here on the post, it, in the corner on the porch is gonna be for the long haul. Look down here at the base. Help us make this decision. Uh, we were talking about raising our, our bottom rail to number one, let air, water, and trash to be able to remove it off the porch. Well, we came down with a lower piece that, that kind of looks better, I think. And so that's kind of one decision to make. Then what about our hand railing? Should it come up at an angle and stay outside? Or can we use a piece to come inside, put in here, whether it was moved out to the edge or placed right in the center. That way this will add for support wherever we put a spindle down here. And that'll really help because this needs a little more structural support. So that's kind of what we're thinking. Lower here for water, air, and trash, be able to sweep off the porch, and then putting these spindles in the middle. That's our game plan. And you see it starting to develop here. We have one more challenge, and that is what we're gonna do around the corner as we get close to the door. Okay, we've got another decision to make. I had Rodney cut a piece in here so we could see using this first rail, see kind of what the presentation it gives us. It gives us a little space in here, maybe to put a pot or a container next to the step. But this other side, what we're really talking about is how we visualize the space here that is under the whole door. In other words, do we need, can we use all this room or can we take as much as the steps provide by having an extension out here. You see, this corner looks pretty cool. And um, even here, it gives us a little bit different look with more space in the patio here. Okay, in this configuration, we would take down, we only need one of these posts. So one of them's gonna go on both sides and we would take down the center one. So we've got a passage right through here. But on this other setup, we would leave the outside one cause that's where the rail is tied to and remove this one. Again, uh, smaller patio, but a little more elbow room and space here. And then this one has more inside usage or space for the patio, but nothing to set a pot or a container out here. The steps kind of demand or take up all the space. Well, whatever decision we make, we need to make it quick, get our rails in here so we can get on with our landscape.
Well, what do you think? It is time to get on with the landscape. Um, what I want to do is make use of three different plant types here first. Along the porch and the railing, let's use the African iris. Then we'll splash in between that the color of the little John azalea with some low growing, something we can keep or maintain the height on, and that is boxwood. So for the iris, we're going to use it to tuck in the initial step right here close to the porch with a little bit on both sides, okay? Again, we're going to round this. We'll come in with our next arch with the little John azalea, bringing them right through here, jumping over. We'll have to eliminate this, but we'll go ahead and build some back in here. Okay, then our third, our boxwood. We're going to come in one more layer out with a curved radius, jump over the walk here, try to continue the process. And again, since we've got a short section, Let's match it up here with the railing. Well, join us for another project. I'm Gary Allen, and I'll see you soon.